G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today I'm back at the beginning of the Bibbulmun track at the northern terminus in Kalamunda. And this time I've got a camera with electronic image stabilisation so it won't be so shaky. The first time I recorded this I did it on my phone and the actual video quality wasn't the best. So I've decided to do this section again today and then I'll be doing the second section. So I'll be travelling from Kalamunda to Hewitt's Hill Shelter and I'll be spending the night there. So I hope you enjoy this video more than the first one. Here we are, take two of Kalamunda to Hewitt's Hill Shelter. And hopefully, a lot better audio. And the video quality is a lot better for you all. Less shaky. It's been about 14 months since I did the first one. And this time it's a tad colder. So I've got a beanie on, I've got thermal gloves on and a couple of layers of clothing on to keep warm. So no doubt tonight it'll be even colder at the shelter. I think the date is probably June the 20th, to, uh, 2020. And the time is just before 9am. So I'm not going to be rushing this section, I'm just going to be enjoying it. Just after you come out of Kalamunda and turn off the road, you walk into this beautiful area. And yeah, if I remember right, it's the old golf course. And every now and then you'll notice, like behind me there, you'll see like a green. And then as we go through, you'll see different patches of green. The smell out here is just beautiful. You can smell all the eucalypts around. Hear the wildlife chirping away. And just slowly warming up. I've then been going about 10 minutes, that's all, just taking my time. And I've already taken one of my gloves off to hold my camera with. So it's nearly time to take the second one off, that's doing nothing. But, still walking through the old golf course. We're looking at all the new plants, all the native, all the regrowth coming through after the control burns. It's little green shoots everywhere, it's beautiful. I don't know if you can see it, but the valley just in front of me is full with mist. It looks like the clouds have fallen out of the sky and just landed down here. Let's get closer to the edge, hopefully you'll be able to see it on the video. A beautiful bench. Isn't that beautiful? 
What's the plaque on it say? A place to rest and a place to remember. A truly remarkable man. Always in our hearts, always in our minds. We were always so busy helping others. In loving memory, in loving memory of Luke Roberts. Rest now and know that we love you. Isn't that beautiful? And look at this view you get from sitting here. Isn't that fantastic? You've got all the mist down in the valley there, so you can't see so much, but it's just, just beautiful. You can see the smoke there. This had a controlled burn, and this is what's left of it. I just met a chap about half a kilometre back taking the signs down. So, if they're doing that, I know it's safe. Walking down into the mist now. I feel the temperature has dropped a little bit more. So I was getting nice and warm up the top. Oh, I can give it half an hour. Most of this mist will be gone, if not all of it. Oh, I remember this from last time. You've got the steps coming down there. And then as you continue down, it's all loose gravel. So be careful. I remember when I first walked past here, the actual Creek was flowing then. Yeah, That's just beautiful. The last time I think when I filmed, it had been raining, but there was no water actually coming down here. But it's still beautiful. So if you got your water filter, there you go, top up. This section of the Bilberman track, there's a lot of steps and they're not all even. Some are two or three inches step down, others are 12, 14, 16 inches step down. So be prepared to adjust in how far you bend your legs to get down. Because as you're walking down a regular set of stairs, you get into a rhythm of the same stepping down, drop. But with these, you don't get a chance. Getting back to walking poles. Are they worth it on this section? Yes. They make it a lot easier to climb up and down the steps and down the gravel area. 
it is possible to do it without going down again but you have to be much more careful go much slower to make sure you're safe and don't slip and hurt yourself and I'm spending a lot of time looking down and not enjoying the view of everything so look at that view up there I don't know if you can see it it's just beautiful all them rocks and over this side of me even more with a creek running down beside them ones. It's just beautiful the sound of that water running. And using walking poles. I will do a, another video on them. But the general consensus that it used to be was you'd save up to 24% of energy on each pole. And then they came out with another one saying you don't use any less energy. And then they came out with another one which says you actually do save 24% per pole on your lower part of your body. But that percentage you save on the lower part of your body is transferred into your upper part of your body. So your upper body all the way down to your toes are all getting a fairly even workout but because of that you're able to walk almost if you're using two poles that is you're almost able to walk twice as far before your legs start hurting as much so that would be the benefit if you wanted to do long distance yeah getting back to walking poles so like I said, each pole will spread, I think is a word now, not to save, but it will spread the energy you use between your legs and your upper body. So you're technically able to walk twice as far with two poles, or 50% further if you're only using one pole. Is that right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. Would it have benefited me of bringing two poles out with me? Yes, but then I wouldn't have been able to hold my camera and film at the same time. I would have had to keep stopping, so to make it anything worthwhile for me now then is if I only bring one pole with me. And then again, I keep swapping and changing my hands with the camera. So if you're looking at doing filming like I do, and you don't mind stopping and starting, or hooking your poles up on your pack, and then getting your camera out filming some, then great, go for it. Would I recommend poles for the everyday hiker? Yes, I would. Like I said, it spreads your energy, it makes it safer and easier climbing up and down these sections like I am now. But like I said, if you're taking your time and you don't mind taking your time and being more careful, then it's all your choice. Around walking now, it was as we're looking down into with all the mist about 45 minutes ago. And as you can see, it's cleared all up and it's just beautiful. The time is 10.15 and even though I've been just taking it easy I'm already 3.8 kilometres in to the 10.1 to Hewitt's shelter so each time I do this I said this is the third time I've done it but the first time I really struggled and on 14 months or 15 months ago when I did it I found it easier and this time, it feels even easier. 
So even when I get a chance to only do a five or six K walk, once, twice, three times a week, it all helps. And the views are just spectacular. Beautiful they are. And I know I'm looking down a lot that way. I'm stepping, going up and down these hills, but I always remember, keep your head up as much as possible. And there's less chance of missing any of the walls. It's a point in the way for you to go. And that way you won't get lost. Or you won't have to walk back four or five kilometers to find the last wall and start all over again. Oh. This section is this up, down, up, down, up, down. My plan is now to slow down. I'm way ahead of what I thought I'd be. So I'll just spend some time relaxing, looking at the scenery as I walk through. And if the camel farm's open, I might even stop there for a coffee. Uh, I was getting too warm and I had to take my caps off. Yeah, there's just too much. Well, I forgot to bring my baseball cap to replace them with to protect my eyes and forehead from the sun. But I'll just do my best to stay in the shade of the trees wherever I can. Not complaining. It's just beautiful out here. Generally, one good part for some people of this section of the Bilbo and Trek between Kalamunda and the Hewitt Shelter is most of the way, if not all the way, you get phone signal. If you're like me, unless you're checking your emails or something that you need to for a job coming up very soon, you turn your phone off. But yeah, you got signal. So if you're worried about coming out and not being able to reach your family or friends, this section, you're able to get out and still, like I said, I'd say 99% have noticed that there's a signal. I slowed down, I did stop my time, I stopped a few times, took some photos, made some videos and time is 11.45 and I'm 600 metres away from the Kalamunda Camel Farm so I'm hoping their coffee shop is open so I'm going to get a coffee It's been a lovely walk The temperature hasn't been too bad Warm enough where I don't need gloves on my hat, but cold enough where I can keep my jacket on and stop the cool breeze getting me. Just losing the camera balance in on my hand. There's been a few people out on the track this morning. One gentleman looked like he'd got lost on his bike. So the signs aren't very... Uh, aware to some people or he wasn't looking because I have seen signs saying no cyclists Goodwin track is predominantly a walking track 
but it does share some four-wheel drive tracks where you'll see the four-wheel drive and cyclists drive, uh, riding down there but if you're watching this video to see if you can ride down the Boomerang track on a bike the answer is no you've got them under Biddy Trail for that you're not even allowed to use any uh, type of trolley anything with wheels on on the big woman track because of the dieback so if you want to do an end-to-end -end on the big woman track no wheels just your feet now that was a bugger so I got to do the camel farm big sign saying open I walked in to get a coffee and they're doing a full coffee machine clean bugger oh, I'll just carry on walking up to the, the shelter and I'll make myself a drink there most times when I come out on the uh, billboard track I bump into a mature lady a widow and I've just bumped into her again now it's about the fifth time in the last six months uh, it's amazing the amount of people who do come out here regular just for a stroll I think she's going to be putting in by the time she gets back to the car about 15 kilometers today good for her Just see the shelter up there, the Hewitt's Hill shelter. One thing I will mention to you is even though you can see the shelter there, you've got to walk past the shelter to the spur trail that takes you up to the shelter. So if you're heading north to south, you walk past a little bit and the sun will be on your right hand side. And the opposite if you're heading south to north. The spur trail will be before the shelter. So there they are, the, the shelters there, just through the trees, and the spur trails here. So we walk past the shelter to the spur trail, and there's a sign on the right hand side. and then steps and a fairly steep hill going up to the shelter well, how did today's walk go? it was bloody beautiful it was I wasn't planning on getting here too early and four or five kilometers in and I was way ahead of the time I predicted so I decided to one slow down to start stopping a lot more and looking around doing videos taking photos and really just enjoying my surroundings so the walk from Kalamunda to the Hewitt shelter here it's just bloody beautiful it's not the easiest because you are up and down them hills and some of the actual hills are quite steep and then they've got the uneven steps along the way but still it's part of the experience and if you do this bit anything after here I suppose it would just get easier and easier. Now I've made it all the way to dwelling up so far and I started all over again to start making the YouTube videos and I think like I said at the beginning of this video the reason I filmed this one again this section is my first videos I was doing on my mobile phone and they weren't very stable and the actual video and sound quality wasn't the best so since I've upgraded my camera 
and the opportunity came to do it again I took the opportunity and here I am would I recommend people walk in the Bibbulmun track? yes it's just beautiful out here this time of the year yes it's going to be cold we're in June of 2020 and we're just coming to the Australian winter and with the sun shining and the blue skies it doesn't look cold but first things in the morning and in the evenings it gets very cold and in the night out here in the bush you need to be prepared that the temperature can drop below zero degrees centigrade so that's below the freezing point walking sticks I think I mentioned along the way yeah they, they do help a lot like I said each walking stick will disperse 24% uh, energy and take it from your legs and move it to your upper body so technically that means that up to 48% of your energy in your legs will be transferred to your upper body if you're using two walking poles and that means technically you can walk near enough double the distance before your legs start hurting as much as if you were walking without your poles so using walking poles on the Bilberman track they will help you don't have to use them if you don't want to but they will help you if you do so if you're new to my channel and you've enjoyed this video please go down below and click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell next to it and click the like button and share it with all your mates and again if you are already a subscriber I thank you very much so until next time get out there have some fun and take care